All right, welcome back for a new video on the inventory system. In this one, I'm gonna convert the Godot 3 system to Godot 4. So everything will still work like it is working in Godot 3. All right, so this time I'm gonna try something different. So instead of showing you the code as I go, I'm gonna just show you what I changed and I'm gonna use Git for that. So I did all the changes and we'll, we're gonna go through all of them. But let's see how it goes. So initial commit starting from part 11. So this is simply starting the project. So here, Godot for auto upgrade. This is when you start Godot, you're gonna be asked if you want to upgrade to Godot 4. And if you say yes, it's gonna change the name of some nodes. So if we ignore the .godot file and go down to the inventory system, it basically renamed a lot of stuff. So for, for example, here, it changed the export and at some place we have different naming for the margin and offset. So yeah, it's basically a bunch of renaming of stuff. And for example, here, when I was using parse JSON, it, it changed it for multiple lines. So it created JSON, it converted and then set the data for, from it. But yeah, you can go through all of these, uh, but this is the automatic conversion. Then after that, I simply open the project. And if we go down, inventory system, it also changed stuff, but this is mostly the imported stuff. So it re-imported everything. And at the bottom here, it changed a few things in the projects, but yeah, it mainly, again, renamed a lot of stuff. Then the other thing is simply changing the name of the project. So if I go in the project Godot, I changed the name and the description, part 12 and updating to Godot 4. That's pretty much it. In Godot 4, your layout is saved. If you start the project from my GitHub, you might have the layout I have. Then the next thing I changed is the uh, dungeon because when I started the project, the tile map for the dungeon was broken. So I had to fix it. It's not really complicated. It was mostly the new tile system, but yeah, that was specific to this little demo. So I don't think you need that unless you do have a isometric game. But since this is the inventory tutorial, I don't think I need to spend too much time on this. So the next thing, I removed the split stack and scale control, but the scale control, I'll bring it back later. I removed the split stack because there's already a lot of UI to fix, and it's not really useful since you can simply shift right click and simply split the stack in half instead of showing the pop-up and selecting the amount. So I removed that. And since I removed the scale control, Everywhere I was using it, I changed it to simply control. I thought I would try something different, but it didn't work well. And then next part is the change for the export I was using a lot. If I go in the first file, the export node path on ready, and then I would set the node that doesn't work well in Godot 4. So I just removed everything here, all of them, they got removed. And I instead swap them for the unique name. So in Godot, you can right click a node that you want to access in your code and select access as a unique name. And if you select this, you have the little percentage sign and you can access it with the percentage sign in your code. You can also, as always, take it and drag it in your code. So in every scene that was using this, I just go through and remove them, set my node as unique name, and then in the code, I simply replace the variable name for the node name with the percentage sign. That's it. So that was changed for all of the other script. And if you want to find quickly something in the code, uh, you can do control shift F and simply type what you want to search for. So for example, this would be node path and then find, and it would get you all the node path that needs to be changed. So from there, you can find everything and change everything there. All right, then for the next one, fixing the export type. That is the other type of export. The last one was for the node path. And this one is the type of the variable. So here, for example, game data, I replaced the resource for the settings data and player data, because now in Godot 4, you can give it your own resource type. So that's pretty useful. So I have the same for player data, uh, vector two dictionary. And like here, loop table, it was an array of string. And now you can type it with the array. And in square brackets, you can type the string, the type of the array. So that's pretty cool. And here, for example, the equipment slot, the type of the equipment in here, you can give it the enum type. So the type is a 
game enums, equipment type. Pretty simple, but really useful. That's pretty much it for the export. You can go through your code and swap all of them. The next thing is I fixed some errors. So if we look at that here at the top, the first thing is I fixed the split stack function. So that's gonna be in the inventory manager. This is the old split function and unstack split. Now it was changed. So I only have one function, which is split and I get the position of the event. And yeah, it will simply split the stack in half. So no more pop-ups. Here, we just see the, the change that has been made. So everything in red has been removed or modified and green, that's the new stuff or modified stuff. Then I fix the file uh, because now it's file access. So I guess I can go into save manager. You don't need to create a file new now, you simply open the file. So here I look if the save file exists and I'm opening the file and then setting it to my variable file. The same with directory, dear access. Here I simply try to open it and if it doesn't exist, I'll, I'll create it. And then I renamed window for UI window. This one caused me a little bit of problem because it can corrupt the UIs. So make sure that all your UI that are inheriting your class are closed so you don't break them. Window has been renamed to UI window because now there's a window class in Godot 4. Crafting list is now using UI window instead. Then I changed the raise function to move to front because this is the function that will bring a control in the front. But yeah, it was renamed in Godot 4. So that's gonna be in draggable control, raise, move to front. Oh yeah. There's also the set scale that was renamed to set UI scale because before it was something like set rect scale. The basic set scale from the control is now set scale. So I cannot use this because I'm overriding it. So I changed it to set UI scale, if that makes sense. I had some other export I, I had forgotten. So I, I changed them here. Then the other thing is I changed func ref the function reference to a callable. That's for the usable items. If I go in the item action menu, those one were using function reference, so drop item. So when you would select drop in the option, it would call the function drop item from the inventory slot. But now instead it's a callable and any function in Godot 4 is a callable. So instead I just do add action and I do the slot node dot slot and dot drop item. So yeah, I'm just sending the function itself. And if you want to add arguments to the function, you simply do bind dot bind and slot node. So before you had to put your arguments in an array at the end. Now I just add it at the end with bind. Yeah, I changed the label alignment. So that's in item stat line. The align for the label is not this anymore. But yeah, it's, oh, it's simply a renaming, but it didn't do it automatically. So I had to change it here. That's pretty much it for those change. One more thing is the get name. Before I was doing get name on the item, but now the resource has the function get name. So I cannot use that anymore. So I just change it to get item name. So it's not confused with the, the basic Godot function. All right, so for the next one, change signal. So the signal in Godot 4 have improved. So before in Godot 3, you would connect your signal by the string of the name of the signal and you would tell it to call the function on which script. But now you add your signal and now the auto completion will help. Then you connect it on a function here or anywhere else. The self that was there could be placed before on cooldown started, but self is not needed here. But yeah, if it would be on something else, you could put the variable before the function. So that's the new way to connect signals. And there's also a new way to emit the signals here. When I want to emit the item dropped signal, instead I simply do signal manager dot item dropped dot emit. And then I pass in the arguments, the item that was dropped. The same for when your mouse entered the inventory slot or exit and yep. Yeah. So I went through all the scripts with the control shift F and changed all of them. Oh yeah, and I also changed the remove in the inventory. Instead of being remove, it's now remove at. And it was at 
two places, a little detail. So now for the updated UI. This one is the most tedious, I would say. To start, I swap the collision layer and mask for the interactables. On the player, the troll here, I have my interactable zone and I swap the collision here. So before it was on the layer, now I place it on the mask and I did the same for the interactable items. The interactable chest, for example, interactable chest here, it's collision layer. Yeah, it was on mask, I swapped it to layer. So yeah, here we can see troll, collision layer and mask has been inverted. Then for all the UI, I went through, fixed the texture and replaced approximately everything. So for example, here the window, I had to come on this node and replace the textures. So the theme override, style, style box, texture, the sub region. You have to edit the region and I had to replace the lines here. Uh, you can do pixel snap and place them again. So, and then the panel are back to what they should be. Now the thing is the other panel that was inheriting the UI window may have been broken. If you have too much problem trying to fix them and the inheritance seems to be broken, what you can do is create a new inherited scene and then copy your differences. So here I only have this node different. So I copy it, I bring it in this new inherited one, paste it there, and then I rename everything, set the variable back, give it the correct script, and then close the inventory player, for example, and then save it over the inventory player. Then the inheritance will be fixed. But that is if you have some problems. For example, I had the problem where the close button would not stay in the corner, the layout was broken. Now the font and font size are separated, so it's easier to set up your fonts everywhere in your game. The texture, yeah. So since my texture is pixel art, what you can do is set your main scene, my UI container here, I went down in texture and filter, I set it to nearest. So all my pixel art is nice and sharp, but you can also do it in your panel themselves. You can go down to texture and select nearest. But if you don't want to do that manually everywhere, you can go in your project settings and in rendering textures, the default texture filter, you can put it to nearest. So there's that. All right, and the last thing is the scale control and some fixes. So let's take a look. I redid the scale control. So if we go down, scale control, I got the scale control script back. I changed a few things, mainly the scale is now UI scale because scale already exists, but the rest is pretty much the same. And for all the window panel, I changed them back to using the scale control. So here, interactable labels, item info, and yeah, in the settings manager, the scale is UI scale. So settings manager, in here, it's mainly some rename. So renaming the scale for UI scale. And in the resource manager, since the font and font size are separated, I simply changed the font here, arcade picks the, the name of the font. And in the item stat line, I set the font and I set the size separately. So in the inventory manager, I get the mouse position so we can get where the event has been made. So to do this, I use the get global mouse position and then I have my event position. So it's more precise and there's no, there's no problem with the scaling with that. And here I have some tests that will be removed. Then a crafting button, it was not connected correctly. A crafting option. I reconnected the signal. A few little fixes I made in here. Renaming some windows, changing the pivot offset, calling the super in the ready function. That is kind of important because in Godot 3, when you would use the ready function, it would call the ready function on the parent also. But now in Godot 4, you have to specify that you want to call it. So by using super, you're gonna call the same function on the parent. So for here, it's gonna call ready on the scale control. So that's important or else your panel will not scale correctly. And also in the settings window, I added the scale, the current scale in the label and did a bunch of renaming. In the save manager, I needed to change this little directory variable to the directory axis, the dir axis, and use make dir absolute. And I think one last thing is the item action menu. If I go 
in the scene, the pop-up menu, you'll have to check a few things. So visible, always on top, transparent, or else you might see some corner if you have rounded corners. And then in the viewport, I also checked transparent BG. But the problem with this one is the scaling doesn't affect the, the font on it. So if I start the game and I right click something, the font is still blurry on this one. The scale doesn't affect it. So yeah, for this one, I'm not sure. I would probably make a custom action menu, but for this demo, I guess it's, it's good enough. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the changes that you'll have to do to fix your game. If you just want to use the script, I would suggest to just download this version since it's already fixed and upgraded. So yeah, I went a bit fast over the changes, but I think it would be better because else it would have been a two hours long video doing all the changes one by one, mainly the UI thing. That one is pretty tedious. And I hope that giving you the main ways to fix it is gonna be enough. But yeah, let me know if you have any problem with this, you can always come on my Discord and I'll be happy to help. If you made a game using this and are having issues upgrading, I would happily help you in your code. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today. So yeah, thanks a lot and a big thank you to my Patreon and a special thanks to Litheline. Awesome. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.